Braising is a combination cooking method. Here we have some some beef. Could braise a whole piece of meat. This is some seasoned flour, a little bit of oil. We have here some carrots and celery, an onion, some red potatoes that are diced, salt and pepper, a little bit of garlic, and a dried bay leaf and some thyme. So when braising, first thing you do generally is sear the item being braised, whether it's a roast or some, usually it's meat. Before we do that though, while the pan is getting hot, I'm going to dredge these pieces of beef in the seasoned flour. And that's going to do two things. It's going to help it brown up and sear nice in the pan. And it's also going to combine with some of the oil in there and kind of get a little roux started. So the pan is good and hot now. We'll go ahead and add these pieces of beef. The idea here is to get a sear on each side of each piece of meat. Get a nice effective browning all the way around each piece. Definitely don't want to crowd your pan. So as each piece sears, you can go ahead and turn it, knock it over on its side until each side of each piece is seared. So the next step would be, the meat's been seared on all sides, the next step would be to take it out of the pan. You don't want to cook it any further at this point. We've got some other things that we want to throw in here before we finish it off. So take all of that out. That was the, the dry heat part of the cooking. Braising is a combination of dry and moist heat cooking methods. This being the dry heat portion of it. Same thing as sautéing. So next you're going to cook or sweat, lightly sweat the vegetables and other ingredients. Again, we're still using dry heat method to cook everything. A little bit of salt. Celery. Braising is similar to a method known as stewing, which is essentially what this finished dish will end up being. The cut of meat that I'm using is short ribs, but the entire pot of ingredients could be served as a stew when we're finished. Go ahead and throw in the potatoes. Here we have some brown stock made from veal bones. This will deglaze.
the fond from the bottom of the pan and it will be your braising liquid. As of right now, everything's being cooked through a moist heat cooking method. <clears throat> so you only need enough liquid to just barely cover your other ingredients when you're braising. We're not, we're not doing a simmer or a boil or a poach. Throw in the garlic. single bay leaf, and a little bit of thyme. So I'll bring it up to about a simmer, at which point we'll be able to throw uh, the meat that was seared back into the pot. So that goes back in. And you can finish your braise right on the stove top. You could just put a lid on it and let it go over really low heat for as long as it takes to get the the braise finished. Or you could do it in the oven. Preheated oven. Go ahead and throw a lid on it. This ensures that the heat is all the way around the pan, not just on the bottom. Reduces the risk of maybe burning your ingredients to the bottom of your pan. So this is a, a cooking method that takes a long time. This has been in the oven for over an hour. You know, the desired result for a braise is commonly referred to as fork tender well done, which means the meat, the protein item, is cooked well done, fully to 165 degrees Fahrenheit, but it's also fork tender, meaning you could shred the, the fibers, the muscle fibers, apart with a fork. So it's a very tender, moist way to cook your meat. Just add some final seasonings to it. The vegetables should be very tender. The long and long cooking time and low temperature gives the connective tissue a long time to break down. We'll get a little sample out here. A lot of flavor is attained using this cooking method. So here's a short rib piece of beef. You can see it very readily will just tear apart with with a fork. Into tender shreds. I'll see the vegetables are very tender. And that is a braise.